This is Brooke Drum with Printerbot.com, and I'm showing you the last step of the dual extruder setup that we've got for you here. So here it is. So this is how that goes together. This is indeed on the back, and these etched holes allow you to have the when you put the screw through there. Oops. It will recess. Probably should have used the electric screwdriver, but you can see how this works. So anyway, that times four that uh, actually screws into the front plate. This is an old V1, um, but it'll replace that and screw into the front with recesses. Now, the next step would be to screw this in once this is all put together. You're going to screw that in uh, straight to that back plate. And because these holes are recessed, you know, you'll be able to sandwich that in there. Okay. So uh, I can illustrate on this side. See how that recess gets that out of the way, bolted to the carriage. So with this, um, you'll want to uh, bolt all those down. Leave this loose enough so you can adjust it. And I can show you how to adjust it once we're all put together, but I wanted to show you how it fits into the, the dual extruder here. Now, this is instructions for the direct drive are on the, um, now we have two, I believe. One is on the simple. Uh, it's oriented this way. And the direct drive uh, ex expansion or what upgrade um, also goes with this way. But the cool thing about the direct drive is it can totally be reversed to the other side. So you can have the motor on either side. That will affect which way the direction of the drive goes. Again, that little trick where you flip the plug can be the quick fix. You can also fix it in firmware. But um, incidentally, the Junior V2 has the motor on this side. So it's totally mirrored. Um, and then these little holes on the bottom will actually plug into here. Where do they go? There, sorry. Where do they go? There, sorry. So it will mount like this, independent of the right side. So the, the idea here is once you get, are these cooled down enough? Once you get the right and left or extruder one and two or whatever you want to call it, um, plugged in you can still reach these adjustment screws. So leaving these four loose enough, these you can tighten down and this will be the height that you measure this to. And then this whole side will end up moving up or down just a little bit. So it might look a little funny if you looked at, at where these plates match, matched up, but the design is so this moves up and down. So that's a rough uh, how to assemble. I can. Uh, Put all this together and mount it up and show you how to level your heads um, for the dual extruder. You might want to add this note. Now, the extruder board firmware is set up to uh, have three extruders. And as a safety measure, if you hook up an extruder, um, it's requiring that you have a thermistor. This is actually just the thermistor for, uh, that we use. Now, normally, if you had three extruders, um, A and B would have a thermistor plugged in. But if you were only running a dual extruder, um, you have to get a thermistor to uh, plug in here so that the fail warning won't say, um, you know, I can't measure the temperature and keep things safe, so I don't want to run. Uh, we're going to have to provide a third um, thermistor as if a hot end was hooked up because it's a safety measure we want to use so that it doesn't the hot end that's plugged in or if there's no hot end um, we just put that safety measure in there basically telling it in the program hey if a hot end's plugged in let's assume there's a hot end there and let's make sure we get a good temperature so that we don't you know melt down the kitchen table
So anyway, it's going to fail unless you get your third thermistor plugged in. In the case of a triple extruder like we have here, um, I just plugged in a third uh, hot end with a thermistor. In case of a dual, you'll need an extra thermistor to plug in or nothing will run. So I wanted to show you how this mounting plate mounts to the V1, uh, I'm sorry, the V2 uh, carriage. So this is what normally comes on a carriage that mount for one, and we'll take that off. It has that back plate on there, so it's similar, right? But it's wider, so we can mount a little more space. So we take the same screws, use the recess, see the rounded is on bottom, the square is on top. So we got that. And then we go through and do all four screws. And so on. And then our mounts will uh, mount right on top of that. Since these are recessed. Okay. So that's how it mounts on a V1 or V2 carriage. The end.